welcome to Bisaya 24-7, your official Cebuano English tutorial on the web. If you find this tutorial useful, please help support this page by clicking on the link provided below. Also, don't forget to check out our official release of our Cebuano tutorial, which is now available on Kindle and in paperback from all global Amazon marketplaces. Um, the book is entitled Biz Duck, Learn to Speak Cebuano Overnight. Daghang salamat. So for today's lesson, we are going to continue our discussion for lesson number three. And this is about the translation of the basic questions into their Cebuano equivalent. So just for review, we have these questions. Unsa, what? Asa, where? Kinsa, who? Kanosa, when? Ngano, why? Unsaon, how? Tagpila, how much? So co to continue, we will have the translation for who? Kinsa. Kinsa ka? Ka is you. Kinsa is who? And this question, Kinsaka, translates to, who are you? Um, basically, when you say Kinsaka, and you're asking, who are you? Uh, most people would answer this question by giving their full names. So, whether you say Kinsaka, or if you specifically ask for the name, Unsa ang imong ngalan? What is your name? You will most likely get the same answer. Uh, most people associate their identity with their full names. However, just for um, the purpose of clarity, I would like to point out that sometimes some people say, Kinsa ang imong ngalan? Which is the wrong usage of kinsa because kinsa ka as a question is um, a full detailed question about your personality so it could be any information that is relevant to your being as a person to your identity so you can either say um, I am the manager of this establishment, so you're, you're saying your position or uh, what's your relevance in reference to a particular um, group or probably an association or any affiliate, or it could be your position. But again, like I've said earlier, most people identify themselves with their full name. So they basically would say, um, or they would just state their full name to answer this question, Kinsaka. Um, if you say Kinsaka, or Unsa ang imong alan, um, you will most likely get the full name of the person. However, when you say Kinsa ang imungalan, just remember that's not the correct usage of Kinsa. Kinsa ang imong inahan translates to Who is your mother? Kinsa man. Note the use of the word man, which is an emphatic question. So this translates to, who is it? Um, previously, we've said um, the question, unsaman. 
it translates to what is it? You can also say kanus aman when for kanus a so that translates to when is it? Kinsa si Juan si Maria who is it John is it Mary? Kinsa ang tagia who is the owner? Tagia is owner. Kankinsa man kini whose is this? Um, take note of these last two questions. When you say kinsa ang tagia, who is the owner, of course, you want to establish ownership. Or if you say kang kinsa man kini, whose is this? You also basically want to establish ownership. So both questions will possibly give you the same answer but take note of the difference when you say who it's kinsa but as soon as you use the pronoun the possessive pronoun whose it changes to kang kinsa just take note of this uh, very distinct difference of who and whose Next, we have ngano, why, and uh, let's have a few examples. Um, you'll probably hear this um, often, ngano ka. Uh, for those who are not from the island or those who don't speak the dialect, you'll probably get confused as to why this phrase nganuka translates to what's wrong with you um, if we get to literal we say ngano why and then ka is you so that would uh, translate to why you um, as Cebuanos we already know that um, nganuka implies what's wrong with you um, what is the explanation for this in simpler terms nganoka is not the exact phrase um, in most likelihood nganoka there is still a phrase which is omitted so nganoka And then after ka, there's most likely a phrase that starts with nga. So it's probably going to go like this. Nga no ka nga magul anun. So why are you sad? Or why do you look sad? Um, take note that even that phrase when you translate it goes to why but as an expression um, this is a generally understood expression that uh, translates to what is wrong with you so in all its uh, full phrasing this probably would come up as you know why are you acting like that what's wrong with you but um, for the purpose of um, ease, we simply cut out the race, uh, I mean the, the phrase, and this results to nganoka. So don't get confused with this translation. It simply means uh, you're trying to figure out, you know, why. Why are you like that? Why are you acting that way? And of course, the next question that follows is, what's wrong with you? So when somebody asks you, ngano ka? Um, it simply is a way of trying to understand, you know, what's wrong with you? 
Why are you acting up like that? And like I have discussed earlier, nga nung nag-uol ka. So that could be nga nung nga nag-uol ka. This is now a more specific question because it states a clear um, situation. Nag-uol. So you are being sad. So if you try to break this down, this phrase would be nga no nga nag ka. So if you just take nga no ka, there would be the two words nga nag -uol. So why are you and then nga nag -uol, sad? So nga no nag -uol ka, why are you sad? If you want to be specific about asking why the person is happy, you can also say, Nga no nga, nalipay ka. Or, if you want to ask why the person is laughing, you can just say, Nga no nagkatawa ka. Or, why did you laugh? Nga no nikatawa ka. So, this one is a more specific uh, use of nga no ka you specify um, the scenario. This next one, nga nung ingon ana man ka? Why are you like that? So, ingon ana. You can just say ingon ana like that or ingon ini like this. So why? Nga no ka? Why are you? Ingon ana. Ingon, maingon, similar. So, nga nung ingon ana? Like that? Or, ingon ini? Like this. Nga nung ingon ana man ka? Why are you like that? Nga no good the eye. Um, the eye here is used for emphasis. You can also say nga no man good. So if you want to say man instead of this word the eye, you can just insert it before you say good. Or you can also say nga no good the eye. And it's the same. So why is it? Why is it like this? Why is, it, why is it so? Um, just take note, um, for the use of the I, it's more on putting emphasis as well to the phrase. Ngano ni? If someone comes to you, let us say your supervisor comes to you, and then he'd be asking you this question. Ngano ni? Um, tighten your belt because in most likelihood you're, you're probably have a lot of explaining to do so you're you're probably in hot water or you probably need to justify something so in all its simplicity I can just say oh explain this to me why is this like this Nga no ni. Ni is again the shortened form of kini. If you want to say, you know, why is that like that? You can just say nga no na. But for this, um, this is so typical. Nga no ni. And then the person will probably point out, you know, what the ni is referring to. So nga no kini or nga no ni. Why is this like this? Explain this to me. Why is this so? Give me an explanation. Give me a justification. Nga no ni. Nga no man ka. Um, if you um, go back to the previous example, nga no ka. 
you can just say, oh, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting up like this or like that? It connotes a more temporary state of things. But when you, once you say, nga no ka, this is more a conclusive um, questioning of the other person's um, being or, you know, his personality. So, man good. There is now this emphatic man good. It's simply um, an expression stating that, oh, I've realized or I've come to realize that you are always like this. So why are you like this every time? Why are you so hard to deal with every time? Or why are you such a pain every time? So it's not just a temporary state, it's more of a an occurrence that keeps on happening every time. So when you ask nga no man good ka, you have already come to the conclusion that the person always acts the same way every time. So it is now more of a question of, you know, the totality of the person. How is he as a person? And in most likelihood, when you say nga no man good ka, you're trying to confront the person, and this is um, your way of, uh, you know, expressing your frustration. On saon? How? On saon pag? How to? Now, when you see this pag, take note that the thing that follows is probably you know, an action word, a verb. So, unsaon pag sulti. Sulti is say or talk or speak. So, you can just say, unsaon pag sulti sa Cebuano. And you can translate that to how to speak in Cebuano. So take note, pag is the prefix that prepares you to use a verb after pag. You can also say, on saon pag sayo sa tinikling. How to dance the tinikling. On saon pag Langoy, how to swim. So pag denotes that an action word is about to follow. Show me how to swim. Unsaon pag langoy, how to swim. Um, the next one is unsaon na lang. Um, this expression is more or less a cry of um, desperation. So if, say for example, something unlikely, unfavorable, or tragic happens to somebody, um, the first cry you'd hear is, Unsao na lang. So this basically translates to, you know, how am I gonna cope with this? How am I going to go about this? Um, how can I figure this out? How am I going to overcome this? So it's more of a, a cry, a real, a real cry of um, desperation. It's like, you know, I'm so lost here. I don't know which way to go. So how am I going to proceed? So, it's, it's just um, a typical expression, a typical um, cry of um, helplessness. How am I going to deal with this? 
how am I going to find my way out of this? Um, the next one, unsaon man yud nga. This is more or less a reasoning or a justification. Unsaon nga. Um, however, it is. It is the way that it is. So, when somebody uh, starts with this, unsaon man yud nga. Uh, the most likely word that follows is bisan. Um, bisan is like um, no matter. So, however I I do it, no matter how I do it, it always comes out like this. So, however I do it. It always ends up like this. Um, no matter how hard I try, it always pans out this way. So anyone who will say, "On Salman Yud, nga bisan mo mata ko sa sa buntag," so it's like whatever I do, even if I wake up early in the morning, I. Still can't be here that early, so this is always probably going to pre precede um, an explanation or a justification. Just don't um, get yourselves confused with um, the translation, but know that as soon as you hear this. It is a way for somebody to reason out why a certain thing is the way it is. The next one is tagbila. How much? Um, if you're a frequent traveler, you probably should know these words. Or phrase, tagbilani, how much is this? Because as you go along your travels, you'll probably get to acquire some stuff or, uh, you know, see a few things that you'd like to collect, to purchase, to buy. And if you're in Cebu or in the Visayas region or even in Mindanao, it will really greatly help you if you know how to say, how much is this? Tagpila ni. Again, ni here is kini. So it means this. Tagpila kini. How much is this? Tagpila ni. How much is this? Or you can also say tagbila na. How much is that? Na is kana. Kana is that. So you say tagbila kana. How much is that? Pila ka buok. How many? When you say buok, it means peace. So pila ka buok translates to how many pieces. And uh, we simply shorten it by saying how many. Let us say um, you're asking for the price and then the vendor would tell you how much it is. And if you think it's too much or it's too pricey, you can just say mahal man. Mahal man. Um, it's a little too much. And then if it's the other way, if it is, um, you know, affordable um, or probably it comes off as a little cheap than a little, I mean, a little cheaper than you expected. Or probably it's just, you know, within your budget, you will probably exclaim, Barato ra. 
Um, it's it's not expensive, so it's barato. It's affordable. And then um, it's also typical for most people who find things to be a little too pricey to, you know, go try to haggle for a cheaper fri uh, price of the uh, commodity. So you can just say hangyo or discount. So you can simply say pwede hangyo, which is actually not the proper or the complete phrase. It should be pwede mo hangyo. Like I want to uh, beg for a discount. Mo. Mo would indicate that it's it's it, you are still you know about to do it. You're still about to beg for that discount. But uh, most people, you know, those people who really speak the language, we we cut it to the chase. So we just shorten it. Pwede hangyo? Um, can you give a discount? Can you give me a discount? Pwede mo hangyo or pwede hangyo? Uh, whichever way is, is okay. It's acceptable. So, um, as you could go around the islands, trying to explore the islands, Perhaps the most important words that you need to know are these two words or two uh, phrases. Salamat, which is thank you. Daghang salamat. Um, thanks a lot. Daghan kaayong salamat. Thank you very much. And, of course, when somebody says to you, Salamat, uh, the best answer would be to say, Why Sapayan? And uh, this Why Sapayan is a simple phrase, which is the shortened form of Why Sapayan Nga? Imo panang isulti. Nga imo panang isulti um, translates to that you have to mention it. Um, sapayan is more or less um, a, a need or a necessity. So when you say why sapayan, why is wala, walay sapayan. Why Sapayan translates to no need or no uh, necessity or it's, it's not necessary. And then the phrase that I said was cut off. Nga imo panang isulti or nga imo panang historia. That translates to mention. So you're saying, um, why sapayan? No need or is not necessary to mention it. So the full phrase again is, why sapayan nga imo panang isulti? And that would translate to, there's no need to say it. So you can also say, oh, just don't mention it. Or... You can also say, you're welcome, or you can also say, anytime. So, just take note. Salamat is a very important word. It's a word of kindness that will always help you as you go along your travels. And equally important as salamat is the phrase, um, why sapayan? Don't mention it. Thank you. Why sapayan? Don't mention it. So I hope um, this lesson 
has um, equipped you with enough of the needed um, words the needed translation for the basic questions and I hope um, I have given you enough um, clarity to be able to really use the right phrase uh, for a particular situation or scenario as you travel around the island. Um, if you find this tutorial useful, please um, don't forget to subscribe and also uh, cl uh, click on the links provided below. And I'm hoping to be able to share more of this uh, tutorial um, globally to be able to help any of you who have been wanting to find a probably easier way to learn and understand the Cebuano language. So, daghan kaayong salamat ug maayong adlaw.